If your dog has been diagnosed with osteosarcoma, you may have heard that it's time to amputate. Uh, let's throw it to our veterinarians, Dr. Dresser in Hawaii and Dr. Ettinger in New York, and uh, talk about the subject of amputating uh, a limb when you have an osteosarcoma diagnosis. Which, which of you would like to take that first? You wanna go for it, Sue? Sure, you want me to go first? Why not? Sure, Dr. Edinger, what do you what do you think about uh, a surgery for osteosarco osteosarcoma? So osteosarcoma is a, an aggressive cancer in two ways, and I think it's really important for that to understand that before you go in for the surgery, because the surgery is only going to deal with half of the cancer. So for most malignant cancers, we talk about two things: the local disease, which is in the primary bone for this cancer, where it is growing. So at the shoulder joint or the knee joint, at, you know, it's not at the joint, but at one of the bones in that area. So that's the local disease. And so amputation is gonna deal with the local disease, again, the cancer growing in the bone. But again, we're also gonna to have to think about the systemic disease, which is that cancer spreading. But for the local disease, amputation is a good option because it will completely remove that dog's cancer in most uh, situations when it's on the limb of the dog. Um, and it's really radical, and I can sit here and really comfortably talk about it, but I know, you know, owners come in, their heads swirling, how do I possibly remove a leg from my, do from my dog? Um, most dogs do really well, and um, we belovedly call those dogs tripods, which sounds a little bit funny, but um, dogs get along really well, and I think one of the cool things about treating dogs and cats with cancer is that they don't necessarily deal with all the emotional baggage that we as their guardians do. Um, they will obviously deal with some pain in the surgical um, time period that we can control with injectable pain medications. But after that, most dogs don't really look back and adapt very well. Um, so I think an amputation is a very good way to deal with a very um, painful bone tumor um, to remove the, the tumor completely from the dog. Dr. Dresser? Yeah, it's such a heart-rending proposition for your average guardian. It's so difficult to contemplate because the truth of it is, it is a radical procedure. It feels almost barbaric. How am I going to put my dog through this? Chop off a leg? It sounds like inconceivable. Now that is unless you start to interact with dogs on three legs. As soon as you become familiar with dogs who walk around on three legs, it may seem uh, almost impossible to contemplate. But in our position as veterinarians and oncologists, we see dogs on three legs all the time. And we can say very, very safely that a dog on three legs can have a fabulous life quality, an excellent life quality. As Dr. Ettinger pointed out, they do not have the baggage in the mind that accompanies removal of a limb. That's our problem. They are not bothered by it particularly. The other thing to remember is dogs have four legs and humans have two legs. They still have three legs. They don't need crutches. They don't need wheelchairs. They can move around just fine. Couple oh, of they days. run, they run, they swim. <laughs> they, I've had dogs still um, sheep, uh, herd sheep. I mean, they just, I mean, some of these dogs run faster than some of the dogs with four legs that I know. That's I mean, right. some of these dogs are just absolutely amazing. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, recently I uh, was down on the beach and I was so pleased to see this dog running around in the water and on the sand and three weeks before I had amputated that dog's leg. And there it was, enjoying the beautiful sky and the beautiful water, happy as can be. So the hang up with the three legs versus the four legs is in the mind of the person. As long as we can make sure that the pain is controlled properly, we've got a good surgeon doing the procedure, we've taken the steps that we need to gather the information for ourselves so we know what to expect on the horizon, we've done it properly, the, the technical elements of the procedure, the aftermath for the dog is nowhere near as bad as it is uh, as we would imagine, in 99.999% of the dogs out there. 
And I think awesome. it's a, it, just to add is that, you know, most of the dogs, the majority of dogs that develop osteosarcoma are middle-aged and older dogs. And most of those dogs have pre, you know, pre-existing osteoarthritis. So, you know, a lot of these dogs, you know, people are concerned, oh, my dog has arthritis. How are they going to be okay on three legs? And the majority of the, of our, even the dogs with some pre-existing arthritis do absolutely great as, you know, on three legs. And I think that's really important to know. Awesome information. Dr. Ettinger in New York, Dr. Dressler in Hawaii, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.